Father, we come to you today and we say thank you that you will never leave us. We say thank you, Lord, that you are there every step of the way. We want to say thank you, Lord, for sustaining us and strengthening us. We declare today, God, that you are a great God in every way. So, Father, we trust you today. With all that's going on in the world today, Lord, we trust you. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Louisiana and in the Gulf Coast region. We pray for their safety. We pray for their protection. We pray for them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for family and friends that may still be on the road or just got off the road last night. We call out their names to you even right now, Lord, that you would comfort them, that you would strengthen them, that you would hold them together. We pray for the chaos in Afghanistan, and we pray for the Delta variant, Lord, all around us, Lord. There are so many issues in this world, more than we can ever keep up with, Lord, and that's on top of the stuff that's happening in our house. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we simply release it all to you right now because we know that you can do exceedingly and abundantly. We know, Lord, that you are greater than every you are stronger than what we face you, you, you you're not surprised by what's happening but Lord we pray in the name of Jesus help us God to continue to trust you more and more and more and more and more every single day we honor your name and we praise your name it's in the son your son Jesus name that we say this prayer and the people of God said amen Somebody give God glory together today. He's worthy. Amen, amen. You may take your seat. We are so thankful to gather together in worship. I, I just believe the Lord moves when we get together. A matter of fact, I don't believe it. I know the Word of God says that where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. And so sometimes you got to press your way through just to get to, to worship so that you can honor God. And so whether our family that's in present, in person, our family online, we are thankful, thankful, thankful for you. I want to invite you this morning and you open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And um, we will consider a few verses in that particular chapter. Matthew chapter 16. Beginning around verse 13. Matthew chapter 16, beginning around verse 13. And it reads this way. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. I'm going to read all of it for context. Bless, Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Amen. I want to focus on verses 13 through 16, but I wanted to read the whole context to give you a framework of what's happening in today's passage. I want to share from just a few moments from this title, Who Am I? Who Am I? About five or six years ago, we took a group from the church to Israel. And while in Israel, we, we looked at several biblical sites. We made our way from Bethlehem to on the Sea of Galilee. We made our way to the, to the Dead Sea. We traveled for about 10 days exploring and looking at biblical sites. And one of the sites that we went to was a site referred to as Caesarea Philippi. It is the very site in which this particular text is is, is captured. 
It is in this site that this site in Caesarea Philippi, it represents a sanctuary to all these idol gods. It, it is the one of the, the main ones was this, this pagan god of Pan. It was filled with idols and shrines and these, these memorials to these idol gods that have been worshipped for years and years. And it's interesting that it's in this place saturated with all of these idol gods that Jesus uses this very background to remind people and to help his disciples to understand his true identity. Friends, even today we live in a world that is saturated with idols of all kinds. We've got all kinds of idols that are, that are, that are, that are pulling people to worship them. We've got this new age spirituality where people are using astrology and horoscopes to shape their lives. People are using stones and crystals and burning sage and talking about the energy is not right in this room as they try to find some new form of worship. They're attempting to manifest into their lives whatever they think they deserve in the universe and channeling all these concepts, trying to find some connection with God. If that's not enough, there are the others who are seeking some type of ethnic identity through the black Hebrew Israelites and others trying to find a connection with God. If that's not enough, some are bowing down to money and bowing down to sexuality and bowing down to entertainment or success, trying to find something they can worship that will fill a void in their lives. And I believe in times like this, in times in which people are trying to turn to all different kinds of things, trying to find power and significance and trying to find identity, I believe that Jesus' words and Jesus' position here in this text that today and in our own world, there's no better time to be reminded of the true identity of Jesus Christ. It's here in the text, Jesus asked this question, who do men say that I am? It's an interesting question. Here is Jesus. He has been walking with his disciples for quite some time now, but now he pauses to ask them a question. Who do men say that I am? Who, who, what is the culture saying? Don't miss it because it's obvious sometimes that Jesus is not concerned about his reputation. He is more concerned about his disciples' understanding of who he is. So he asked them, who, who, what, what do the streets say? What's, what, what do others say? And what is the word on the street? And the disciples, they're not afraid. They check their social media accounts. They, they check the latest word. They listen to what's happening in the barber shop and the hair salon, and they give him the report. They say, Jesus, some say you're John the Baptist that fiery preacher from the wilderness that called people to repentance, that held people accountable and lost his life for speaking the truth to power. Some say you are, you are, you are, you are Jeremiah, that, that powerful prophet that was the weeping prophet that, 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 that predicted the doom of the kingdom, that, that, that wept over Jerusalem, that, that powerful prophet. Some say you're Elijah that did miracle after miracle after miracle that, that, was, that was powerful in every way. Some say you're one of those, but others say you're just one of the prophets. Jesus, the report is good on the streets. They, they say you're Elijah. They say you're John the Baptist. They say you're Jeremiah. They say he has to be a prophet. And Jesus listens in and he hears this report. And the truth be told that that question is even prominent today. Some studies suggest that nine out of ten people believe that at one time Jesus walked on the earth. Now, there's all kinds of beliefs about Jesus today. There are some who believe he was a, a good teacher, some that believe that he was a, a good writer, a person of wisdom. There are some that believe he wasn't divine, he just was a man that lived for a season and died. There are some who believe he's just like Buddha or Muhammad, he's just another religious teacher, another person that has come and gone and now people follow him. There are all kinds of beliefs about Jesus. Matter of fact, with each generation, Jesus' value has becoming less and less and less. 
There is a waning, and it seems to be a, a, a somewhat uh, continued degeneration of the view of who Jesus is. But the truth of the matter is that everybody starts there. The truth of the matter is that all of us start in that very place, trying to figure out who Jesus is. That no one is born knowing who Jesus is. The Bible says this, that, we, 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 that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we know what it's like to have doubts and to have struggles and to have questions and to be lost and to miss the mark. He says, who does the culture say that I am? And then when that's not enough, he then moves the question a little closer and asks the question this way, who do you say that I am? Uh, he says it's not enough to know what the popular opinion is in the culture. He says, I want to know for you. I want to know what, what do you say? He says, I appreciate all the PowerPoint slides and the projections and the market analysis, all your research, but I want to know what do you say? It's a question that everybody has to answer at some point in your life. Matter of fact, it's the most important question you'll ever answer in your life. Is who do you say that Jesus is? Jesus reminds us, friends, that, it, that, that this is a really a personal matter. That the culture may say certain things, your friends may say certain things, uh, that your, your, your family may say certain things, but, but what about you? Are, are you going to believe that he is just a good moral teacher? Are you going to believe that Christianity is some white man's religion? Are you going to believe that he worked for the older generation, but he doesn't work for you? Are you going to believe that, 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 that he was some fictional character of the past? Are you, are you going to believe that you've outgrown that kind of thinking and spirituality? Are you going to believe that you need something better and something different and something more modern and something you can touch and something you can feel? Every single one of us must make a decision for ourselves about who Jesus is. And then Peter, that, that, that quick-witted one that, that often is the first to respond, that, that, that Peter speaks up. And he says these words in verse 16, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And some versions will say, you are the Christ. Some versions say, you are the Messiah. But they all say, the Son of the living God. They interchange these words. And, and here in this, here it is, a personal confession. Here, here, Peter, 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 Peter now answers the question for himself. Here it is. Peter answers the question before Jesus and declares that you are Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that Peter does not ask the question kind of, you know, when, you, when you're trying to answer a question and you don't really know, you say, oh, you, you are Christ. Um, um, son of the living. I don't believe that's how Peter answered the question. I, I, I believe that Peter had now been with Jesus long enough that when the question comes up, when nobody else responds, Peter, the spokesman of the groups, yells out, I got the answer. I got the answer. You are Christ, son of the living God. And Peter gets his answer out. And, and I want you to catch this. Uh, sometimes you got to slow down and begin to process and ponder all that Jesus is. Matter of fact, he's so great that even the pages of Scripture cannot contain and comprehend how vast and how great and how mighty and how infinite he is in all of his ways. Words can't even capture all that he can, but it does the best possible. So allow us to slow down for a few minutes, moments, friends, because one scholar said this, one of the best things you can do is to every day spend at least two minutes thinking about Jesus. And when you spend those two minutes thinking about Jesus, it will shape your entire day. Maybe the reason that we sometimes get overrun with worry and overrun with anxiety and overrun with the problems that we face is that maybe we need just a couple of minutes, just a little talk with you, just some moments and some times reflecting on Jesus. And friends, I believe it will help change how we view and see the world around us. He says his name is Jesus. There are four unique expressions that he, he captures in this verse 16 or in this particular text. First is his common name, Jesus. It is this name, Yoshia. It is, it is this name, it is Yoshia. It is Jesus. His, his Hebrew name, Yoshia, that, 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 that is translated Joshua. 
And Jesus is the name that simply means this, Yahweh saves. Matter of fact, it is there in Matthew 1 and 20 that he has given the name Jesus. And remember Matthew 1 and 20, he speaks to them before he's born. He says, you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. This is the common name of Jesus. But then he has another title. Here it is. He is Jesus, son of of the living God. It is this title, the Son of the living God, that speaks to the deity of Jesus. It speaks to this reality that Jesus is equal with God in both his essence and his nature. That like God, Jesus has all power. Jesus has all wisdom. Jesus has all authority. Jesus has all knowledge. Jesus has all truth. Jesus has all mercy. Jesus has all goodness and all justice and all righteousness and all graciousness and all kindness and all compassion. This is who he is. Jesus is preexistent and eternal. Jesus, John 1 and 1 puts it this way, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And 14 says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That Jesus was there at creation. Jesus is present right now, and Jesus will be present at the end. He, he is eternal, and he is preexistent. But not only that, Jesus was present at creation. He was present during the prophets. He was present during the kings. He was present during his ministry. And he will be present when the end of time comes. He is eternal in every way. But Jesus also is self-existent and self-sufficient. No one had to wake Jesus up. No one had to remind Jesus. Jesus does not have to Google anything. He already knows. He, he is the self-existent and he is self-sufficient. He doesn't need you. He has everything that he needs. He, he invites us to join him, but he has no need. He holds no sign. He doesn't need to search anything. He doesn't have to apply for anything. He has everything in himself and everything that is alive is only as alive because it is sustained by him. He sustains everything and everything is held by him. Colossians says he is before all things and in him all things hold together. But he's also unchanging. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His love doesn't change. His care doesn't change. His forgiveness doesn't change. His character doesn't change. His reach doesn't change. His dependability doesn't change. His ways doesn't change. He is unchanging. Not only that, he's all powerful. And that's what you see. He's so powerful that sickness cannot defeat him. Death cannot defeat him. Disease cannot defeat him. Nature cannot defeat him. He is God, and he's God all by himself. That's the Jesus that we serve. He is the son of the living God. And friends, sometimes you just need to take that to heart. When you get news and when you watch the news and when you see stuff that disturbs your heart and when you don't know which way to go and when you don't know when the Delta variant will change and when you don't know when we'll stop wearing masks and when you don't know when things will get back to normal, you don't fret about when, you don't fret about how, you just remind yourself, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it is Jesus that will sustain us through every season that we come because he is son of the living God. Matter of fact, friend, you can just pick whatever character you need for the day of the week. On Monday, you might need to be reminded of his love. On Tuesday, you might need to be reminded of his power. On Wednesday, you might need to be reminded of his presence. On Thursday, you might need to be reminded of his forgiveness. On Friday, you might need to be reminded of his sustaining power that he holds all things in his hand. I don't care what you pick. I just want you to know that Jesus is the one that will sustain you and sustain me and sustain this church and sustain our future and sustain your kids and sustain your grandkids and sustain the next generation. Jesus is more than enough. Oh, yes, he is. He is the Son of God. 
He is the Son. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And I want you to know you can trust him, friend. That you're not trusting someone that doesn't have power. You're not trusting someone that cannot handle what you're facing. You're not trusting someone that's overwhelmed by the world events and the news. You're not trusting someone that doesn't know where he's going. No, no, no. Jesus is God's son, the son of the living God. This is who we serve. He is son of the living God. But Jesus is also the son of man. He's also the son of man. It's in verse 13 that Jesus, when he asked the question, he says, who? Who do they say he is the son of man? Who, what do they say? What are they saying about the son? It is this title Jesus uses about himself. Matter of fact, son of man is, is the most popular title that he uses. It's, it's over a hundred times it's featured in scriptures. It is, it is the favorite title of Jesus himself, son of man. While, while, while son of God speaks to his deity, son of man speaks to his humanity. This, this, this Jesus that was in the beginning that created all things, that sustained all things. This Jesus accepted assignment and he he chose to come to earth. Uh, Isaiah 7 and 14 tells he was born of a virgin Mary. That that this was not a spur of the moment idea, but before the foundations of the earth, it was already planned that he was gonna come. He was was born of a virgin Mary. He, He willingly chose to take on human flesh. And no one had ever done this, never had it ever occurred that a, that a God would take on human form. And Jesus was fully human. In his humanity, he could, he could thirst and tire. In his humanity, he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. In his humanity, he felt compassion for the people. In his humanity, he withdrew the prey. In his humanity, he ate and he slept. In his humanity, he faced opposition and ridicule. In his humanity, he was troubled and sorrowful. In his humanity, he labored and became physically weak. John Calvin says these words, Christ has put on our feelings along with our flesh. And when he came and he, he lived on this earth some 30, 32, three years, Hebrews 14 and 5 says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. See, despite his humanity, he experienced much of what we experience, but he knew no sin. He was sinless. He never sinned in word or deed. And when you think about Jesus, the Son of Man, I ought to remind you that he can relate to our struggles. He knows what it's like to be disappointed. He knows what it's like to have joy, but he knows what it's like for anger and anticipation and trust and for sadness and disappointment. He knows what it is like. He never sinned in these ways, but he was, he did experience these things. He knew what it was like to have heart and difficulty and despair. He experienced what it was like to love. He, he experienced what it was like to, to see the failures in others and betrayal such as he was betrayed. So he is able to empathize with us. And so in those moments in life where you are wrestling with your emotions, in those moments of life where you have great gratitude about all that God has done in your life, when you have moments in your life when you have great gratitude for your health and for your strength and for the activities and for the blessings and for the, the things that he's done that has exceeded your expectation, for the moments in life when you can look around at life and all you can do is say, thank you, Jesus. He can relate to those moments because he knows what it's like to be able to be in a place of being grateful for all that God has done. And and yet, too, in those moments of life where tears may come to your eye, where disappointment may fill you, he, too, knows what that's like because the Bible says he wept 
over Jerusalem because Jerusalem had not had rejected him. He, he wept at the tomb of Lazarus. He, he knows what it's like for, for pain and suffering to enter into our lives. In those seasons of life where you and I go through times of suffering, we can remember he suffered too as he was nailed and suffered and beaten for us. He knows what it's like to go through the pain and the difficulty of our life. He was, he is the son of man. He can relate to what you're going through. But you don't have to think that he is somewhere far, far away. No, no, no. He is God with us. He is God in us. He is God through us. He is God for us. He is with us in all that we go through. He is son of God, but he's also son of man. But then there's another title that he give, they give him here. It is Jesus Christ. It is the title of Christ. Some versions say Messiah, but it is this title that he comes. He says, he says, who are you? He says, you are the Messiah. Or in some versions, you are Christ. You, 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 you are the Christ. Christ, Christ, Jesus Christ is not his last name. Christ is a title for him. Christ, Christ, Christ from the Greek word Christos, this, this Christ, it, is, it translates a Hebrew word in the Old Testament where we get the word Messiah, it, 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 which, which comes from another word meaning the anointed one. This, this, this Messiah, it, it, it comes from a, a term that refers to the anointed one. It, it is a phrase there in the Hebrew where when, when, when a king or when a priest was, was anointed, they would take olive oil and they would, they would smear it on the head, on, on the head of the king or the priest or the anointed one, and they would be called the, the smeared one, which is where the word Messiah comes from, which is where the word Christ comes from. They are all linked together and so so what Peter says you 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 are the spirit you are the Messiah you you are the anointed one because there is a, an assignment upon your life here it is that, that throughout the Old Testament there was a prediction that a Messiah was going to come the Judaism they, they held forward and held out that a Messiah was going to come somebody was going to come and deliver them from all they had been through deliver them through all the suffering deliver them through all of the persecution they were waiting and waiting and waiting but unfortunately they were looking for a political messiah somebody to deliver them from the romans deliver them politically deliver them with greater power but when jesus shows up he does not come for a political position he comes from a spiritual position because he already has political position he, he doesn't need that he comes for spiritual renewal and spiritual revelation and so when peter shows up peter says you are Christ you 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 are the Messiah you you are the one we've been waiting on you are the one that the scriptures spoke of you are the one that Isaiah said was going to come you are the one that Jeremiah predicted and friends here's the truth every book of the Bible all points to Jesus this is the essence of all of Scripture. Every book in the Bible, it all points to him because he is Christ. He is the deliverer. He is the redeemer. He is the savior. It all points to him, friends. It's him. It's, it's him that is the center. It's, it's him. It's him. It is him. It is him that is the priest of all priests. It is him that is the king of all kings. It is him that is the prophet of all prophets. It is him in which the Bible keeps pointing to this figure, and the figure is Jesus Christ. The Messiah has come. The one they've been waiting on all this time the one they've been looking for, the one they've been expecting. And Peter says, this is him. He said, this Christ who is fully God and fully man, he comes with this unique assignment. One person, two natures. Nobody's ever made this claim before. And he comes as Messiah to save the people. And how does he do it? He, 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 they, 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 he, 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 Peter makes this prediction but Peter doesn't know all that's going to happen in the chapters that are going to come. Matter of fact, it is, it is, it is Peter's recognition that unpacks verses 21 through 28 when Jesus reveals, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to a cross. I'm going to, I'm going to be nailed to that cross. They're going, to, they're going to beat me. They're going to mistreat me. 
They're going, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to bleed. And I'm going to be lifted up high on that cross. And I'm going to stay on that cross for three days. But on the third day, I am going to raise from, I'm going to rise from the dead because he is the Messiah. And he wants us to understand that he came with an assignment. This is what Philippians 2 is talking about when it says these words. Who being in very nature God, they did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance of the man. And he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Let the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Who is he? He is not a man that lived and once died. He is not a wise teacher that has good sayings. He is not just a prophet that came and now it's no longer alive. No, no, no. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And friends, with all that's happening in our world, with the craziness in Austin as they attempt to, again, to suppress the, black, the vote of black people, with all that's happening in this world, with an impending storm on the Gulf Coast, with all that's happening in this world, with the issues in Afghanistan, with all that's happening in this world, not only on the world stage, but, but in the COVID, the COVID that continues to ramp up and grow up and hospital rooms continue to fill up. With all that's happening in this world, not only on the world stage, but in your own house, stuff with your family, stuff with your health, stuff with your brothers and your sisters, and your children that have diagnosed with all that's going on in this world. Friends, I came by here to remind you, just remember who Jesus is. Let that, let that, let that sit in your spirit and sit in your heart and sit in your mind that he is who he said he is. That he is Jesus, son of the living God. He is son of man. He can relate to your issues and your struggles. He is son of God. He has all power in his hand. And he is the Christ, the promised and the Messiah who has come to save all of his people from their sins. Friends, I want to promise you when you hold on to who Jesus is, it is the spiritual ID card that will get you through whatever you go through in life. It is the spiritual stamina that will give you the strength that you need when you got to be in the hospital waiting room. It is the strength that you need when you find out they won't keep your job. It is the strength that you need when there's division and chaos in your house. Because I want you to understand, I gave you a few titles for him, but somebody in the room knows he's got more titles than that. He got some titles for whatever your situation is. And it's not so much about getting from him. It's about honoring him. All that you have and all the days of your life. All you got to do is say, Lord, I just want to honor you with my life. I know stuff is going crazy and I know stuff can be chaotic. But God, I made up in my mind a long time ago. I just want to honor you with my life. I just want to honor you, Jesus, as a man. I just want to honor you, Jesus, as a woman. I just want to honor you, Jesus, as a husband or a wife. I just want to honor you, Jesus, as a single or in my marriage. I just want to honor you because I know if I honor you, you'll take care of everything else. Somebody knows he has some more names. Somebody knows this is not the whole list of his names. Somebody's been walking with him long enough that knows he has some names that can get you through situations. I believe the reason Peter made this declaration 
brothers that Peter has seen Jesus in many forms and many fashions. And Peter's not the only one, but somebody in this room today has seen the Lord move in your life. You've seen Jesus in your 20s. You've seen Jesus in your 30s. You've seen Jesus in your 50s. And you can know today that when you stand with Jesus, he will stand with you. And you'll say, yes, he is the Son of God. Yes, he is the Son of the living God. Yes, he is the Son of man. But somebody had to reach back and say he is the Prince of Peace. He is Wonderful Counselor. He is Everlasting Father. He is Mighty God. He is a friend that sits closer than a brother. He is a bridge over troubled water. He is the Good Shepherd. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Mighty God. He Thy source in life. He is the living water. He is the true vine. He is the bread of life. He is water when I'm thirsty. Ooh, when I'm hungry. Anybody know that you can trust in Jesus? Somebody ought to shout Jesus in your living room. Shout Jesus in your house. Jesus, how did you make it? Jesus, how did you get here? Jesus, how you go make it? Jesus, how'd you pay your bills? Jesus, who heals your body? Jesus, who gave you health and strength? Jesus, who shows you your way? Jesus, how did you raise those kids? Jesus, how did you make it through loss? Jesus, how did you make it through difficulty? Jesus, how'd you go do it? Jesus, I look to him. He is my strength. He is my keeper. He is my deliverer. He is my way maker. Somebody stop Jesus. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. Somebody right now, would you begin to just thank Jesus out loud? Come on. Wherever you are, begin to look at your life and begin to thank Jesus. As you think about your family, just begin to thank Jesus. As you think about what you're facing, just begin to thank Jesus and begin to call his name. And I believe when you call his name, he'll show up in your life. He'll show up for your family member. He'll show up for your mother. He'll show up for your children. He'll show up in your business. You ought to just tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, call his name. 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 Come on, call his name. 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 Call his name, call his name, call his name, call his name, call his name. Come on, call his name. That's what's been getting you through. Jesus has been working in your life. Call his name for your loved one that's sick. Call his name for the purpose he has on your life. Call his name for this season in your life. He is moving, he is working, he is guiding.
Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus, thank you, Jesus. 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 can take your seats all over the room today. Somebody today needs to come to know Jesus Christ. Somebody today that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior today. You need to say yes to Jesus Christ. You've got to answer the question, who is Jesus? If you're ready today to say yes to him as your Lord and Savior, if you're here today and you're ready to say, I want to follow him, I want to give my life to him, I want to trust him today. I want to invite you even right now, if you're online, there's information at the bottom of the screen. If you're in this room today and you want to follow after him today, if you're in this room today and you want to, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ today, I just want to invite you to stand right where you are. Come on, anybody in this room today that wants to give your life to Jesus Christ, anybody in this room that wants to join this church family, if you're here today, I just invite you to stand right where you are and I just want to offer a prayer with you for the work that God wants to do in your life 
for the new beginning God wants to give you. If you're online today, we invite you to follow that information on your screen today. And we thank God in advance for decisions that are happening right now. You can follow the information on the screen, grab your phone, and begin to text that information. And that will help you begin your new journey with the Lord today, trusting your life to Jesus. We praise God for anybody, even this morning, that's making a decision as we speak, that's texting it in online in the room. We praise God even now for the decisions. Come on, would you give God a praise right now for decisions that are being made, decisions that are being made, lives that are being changed right now. The second thing I want to do right now is uh, I want to invite anybody right now that wants to give to God, wants to give to God. Listen, it's when you, when you follow Jesus, you just give him everything. You give him everything. You give him all of your life. You give him your finances. You give him your future. You give it all to him. And so this is our moment. This is our chance to give and to honor Jesus right now. So would you give to him right now all over the room? Take this moment to give. If you can set it up automatically so it is all already done whatever the case let's give to God right now let's honor him let's honor him let's honor him even in this very moment even in this very moment let me do let me let me let me do one thing before we leave today I, I talked to a sister on her way in and uh, she had she had she had DM me on Instagram and said would you pray for my family that's in New Orleans that could not get out and, uh, and we were FaceTiming in the foyer before service with her relatives that were there. And I told them we would pray for them in our service. And so if you've got any relatives that have been impacted either by this recent storm, would you stand? I know a lot of our church family is from New Orleans. And, and if you have any family that have been impacted, would you just stand? We're going to pray. You're going you to be standing on behalf of your family. If, if you're online, type the family name in the chat or tap it in the chat. And we're going to pray for you, all right? The other thing I want to pray for, if you are in the medical field or a loved one in your life is in the medical field, would you stand? Because our medical fields are going through so much right now as they are caring for COVID patients as they are working so hard. Would you stand? So we go cover both of these. So Concord, as we get ready to leave today, uh, I want to, we're going to go pray and then we go, we go, they go give us some worship on our way out as we leave. All right. But as we, as we leave, we want to offer this prayer. Final thing I want to mention to you as you leave, we have a couple of candidates running for office and they need your support. You can sign those petitions on your way out. All right, here's the final thing I want you to do, family. We go pray for this storm and we go pray for those medical professionals in our church family. Are you with me? We go pray for this storm and we go pray for those medical professionals in this room. And then once we finish that prayer, we're going to dismiss you. But listen, just keep on praying the rest of this week. And this week, I want you just to meditate on Jesus. You can pick a verse and just meditate on that. But I want you to spend this week, give at least two minutes just to think about Jesus. And I just believe that's going to change our focus. It's going to change how we face what we face. Come on, y'all. Let's pray together. Come on, pray for the storm. Pray for the storm. Pray for the storm that they're facing. Pray for those in medical space. Come on, everybody's praying together. Come on, pray for those in the pathway of this storm. Some dealing with PTSD as they think back 16 years ago. Some that have just gotten off the road. I told you of the member who has family members that could not get out. Come on, just cover them all. Cover the medical professionals in our, on our, in our team, in our family. Come on, cover the medical people in your family. Come on, pray for them as they are on the front lines of this epidemic. Yes, Lord. 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 Pray for safety. Pray for protection. Pray for it. Safety, protection, 
safety, protection, strength. We pray against anxiety, against fear. Move, Lord Jesus, please. Be with those that could not get out. Be with those still on the road. Be with those that were stuck on highways. Be with nurses and doctors that are saying, here we go again. Be with, give them strength when they're exhausted. Give them peace. We pray for people to get the vaccine. We pray for all those unvaccinated to, to get the vaccine to help us. Lord, we pray right now. Lord, we lift it all to you right now. Lord, we know this is beyond us, but we trust you to see us through it. We trust it. We pray for every family that's standing. We pray for every brother or sister that's standing, and we commit it to you, and we are determined to trust you through this. When we are weak, we are strong in you. So we look to you, we rely upon you, and we say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.